Hello and welcome to Helpline Extra, where we take a deeper dive into some of the topics we see time and again on our regular Helpline show. I am joined by Chris Minogue, our Mothercraft expert, who is with us every week on our regular Helpline. She has over 30 years experience, so she can answer all of the questions. And um, I just before we start the deep dive, I do want to preface this by saying this advice is not intended as professional medical advice. And if you have any questions, please make sure you go and see your GP. Chris, our topic today is introducing solids. Oh, okay. <laughs> When is the right age to start introducing solids? Okay, so this is where lots of parents ask lots of questions and it's very confusing because there are no set regulations. And when you look at all the information about solids, the reason it's confusing is the general guidelines is after four months of age and before six months of age. So how do you know if your child's ready for those solids? So normally they have to be able to hold their body still so that they can concentrate on a spoon coming to them. Um, they need to be able to hold their tongue back in their mouth and they need to be of an age where they can clear the spoon of food. So generally I would say that's around the five month mark where all of that comes together. But we know that some babies can handle a little bit earlier and a little bit later. But four months isn't the set time to do it. It's when your baby is ready for solids. And what foods should we start with? You should start with a creamy consistency of purees. So again, this is very different. So I would say that you want to start with foods that are easy digestible. So things, it could be anything from a rice cereal, a baby rice cereal with a little bit of fruit in it, right through to a puree of sweet potato or pumpkin or carrot or something like that. But it's more about the consistency of the food and I just think of cream. So if it looks like cream, you've probably got it at the right consistency. All right. And how long should we stick with just one food? Okay. So in our Mother's Day, there was the hard and fast three-day rule. So you didn't introduce anything for three days. You were checking for an allergy or an allergic reaction. But these days, we sort of know that in the basic vegetables, babies can tolerate those. So we don't usually have a set rule for you have to have sweet potato for three days and apple for three days. Once the baby tolerates a food, sweet potato, then you can add something to it. So you might put zucchini in it the next day. And then a couple of days later, you might give the baby some carrot. So it's more like they're tasting all these different flavors and they're getting used to the sensation of eating. And um, some babies will have a very distinct palate, like you give them broccoli and they will never eat broccoli again. <laughs> so it's not so much the set days, it's how your baby's reacting. If they're enjoying the meal, then you can add something else to it. All right. And how much do you feed them and when? Okay, so how much you feed them. Again, I can see why parents are really confused because you will get something from somebody stating, feed them until they stop eating, right through to one teaspoon. So how do you navigate something that big when you're the first time parent with a spoon in your hand and some puree? So I would say that you've got to remember that a baby's stomach is really small and that they can't self-regulate. So what that means is if you and I were sitting here with a nice chocolate cake mm. between us, <laughs> we would know when to stop. So yeah. we, we would start with one <laughs> slice and we'd think about a second slice and sometimes we go for the second slice and sometimes we go, no, we just have to stop. With a little baby, the general rule that you hear randomly is they'll stop when they're ready to stop, but they don't know that yet. So we need to help, help regulate them. And I usually suggest to parents to start with about a tablespoon of food and gauge it from your baby. If they only have three teaspoons and then they stop, the baby's telling you, I don't need any more. But if they eat the whole of that one tablespoon of food, then I just give them that tablespoon for a couple of days before I increase it. Just let their stomachs get used to it and get their bodies used to it before you increase. So I think you have to have an amount that you can regulate how well they're doing. And we also are giving the babies the cue about how to eat. So. If that's a reasonable amount for them for a five-month-old is one tablespoon, but you're 
five month old takes a tablespoon and a half, that's not that bad, but it wouldn't be taking four tablespoons because then I think it would be really uncomfortable. So you can see how parents can get really confused with this information. So usually I start with one tablespoon, I keep them on that tablespoon, tablespoon for a couple of days and then I just slowly increase. How often do you feed them in that period? You know, okay. One tablespoon, but how many times? So, a if day? we're starting our baby between that four and six month window, they'd probably only be on one meal. So, the general rule, and certainly the general information, is they're on one meal up until about six months, then two at around six months, and then they're well established on three by seven months. So, each child is different. So, you could have a child that's on three meals at six months but they're definitely on three meals by seven months. Right. So it's still not clear, and we know it's not clear, but I think sometimes you've got to gauge from where your baby's at as to how they're going to react to starting solids. Oh, brilliant. Well, Chris, thank you so much for your advice. That's a pleasure. I'm Siobhan Hunt. See you next time.